Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Sax Academy and in today's lesson we're doing the classic jazz standard Blue Bossa. So before we get started, link down in the description below, you can get yourself a copy of the free PDF and backing tracks that accompany today's lesson. And if you enjoy this lesson and you find those resources useful, you can also buy me a coffee and the link to that is also down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons. We're going to be doing Blue Bossa in three different ways for beginners, intermediates and advanced level players. The beginner section is just going to be twice through the 16 bar melody and on the second playing there's a little bit of variation and that's at 100 BPM. For the intermediates we're going up to 120 BPM and we have the tune, one chorus of solo and the tune again at the end. And for the advanced players we've got a similar thing, we're going up again in speed to 140 BPM this time and this time we have two choruses of solo. With all three of these arrangements, at the end we're going to repeat the last four bars three times in a row, which is a really standard way to end this tune. Okay, so first of all we'll do the beginner version, and then I'll explain a little bit more about the harmony and what can use to improvise for the intermediate and advanced versions. So Blue Bossa is a 16 bar form, so one of the shorter ones. Most standards are normally around 32 bars, which makes this one quite easy to learn. We're in a minor key and we start with chord one, and then we go to chord four, and then we have what's called a minor two five one. If you're unfamiliar with this chord progression, um, I've made a video on how to improvise over a minor two five one. The card to that is below and linked down below. Then we're modulating up a semitone, so B flat major for alto saxophones and E flat major for tenor saxophones, and we have a two five one going to that key. And we finish off the form with another minor 251. So for improvising, you can use the minor pentatonic that corresponds with the chord name. So if you're an alto player, it's A minor pentatonic. And for tenor players, it would be the D minor pentatonic. When you get to that minor 251, there are a number of options. We don't have time to go through all of them now, but one you could try to use is the harmonic minor scale over the two and the five. And then when you go to one, you can go back to your normal minor pentatonic scale. Then when we're modulating into concert D flat major, um, alto sax players can use your B flat major scale and tenor sax players you can use your E flat major scale. If you know any language, if you've learned any licks or little pieces of language here and there over these two five ones, you can try those out in this tune as well and it's going to sound really nice. Now of course you can have a look at my solo, you can see what I'm using and try and use similar groups of notes when you hit those chords to create similar sounds. Okay so here's the intermediate version.
Remember, along with the example tracks that we've got here, I've also got some backing tracks where I've removed the saxophone part. So you're free to play the melody how you want and to improvise a solo. And you can either play the solo that I've written out here or you can improvise your own. So now it's time for the advanced version. <laughs> Now this is a classic tune that you can play at any jam session. This is the standard key that it's played in. So if you're someone that's thinking about maybe going to some jam sessions, this is a great one to learn. All right, that's it for this week, guys. Remember, if you've enjoyed this lesson, you can buy me a coffee. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. Okay, I'll see you next week.